As our project gets bigger, it can be beneficial to use a Make program. In this tutorial, we're going to be using CMake. So to install CMake, we just need to go to the CMake website and download it. So we just download the latest release. And for Windows, we download the Windows. For Linux, we download Linux. So on and so forth. Just downloading the installer. So I have the installer here. Just go next. Accept the terms. So we need to add CMake to the system path for all users. Or if you would rather not do that, you can just add it to the system path for the current user. But I'm going to add it to all users. Press next. Install it to the directory that you want to. All right, now that we're finished, we can go in and start setting up our project to use CMake. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is move all of our source files into a folder called source. So that is all of our ASM and all of our CPP and H files. We can delete all of these .o files because they're just rubbish at this point and the same with this bin file. And we could also delete bootloader.flp because when we're done, we're going to be regenerating it. All right, now we need to create a new text file and call it cmakelists. So cmakelists and open that one up. You don't need to use Notepad, you can use your favorite text editor, but I'm going to be using Notepad. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to find the minimum required cmake version. So cmake minimum required bracket version and I'll just go with 3.0 alright now we need to set the CMake try compiled target type as a static library we need to do this so that CMake doesn't try and compile an executable with our custom compiler because that won't work and then CMake will give us an error so we need to do this so set CMake try compile target type quotation mark static underscore library now we set the project name I'm just going to name it os and now we need to set the include directories so include directories bracket quotation dollar sign spiky bracket project source dir spiky bracket slash source so what this does is it gets the current project source directory and then goes into the source folder. So that will be able to let it find all of our source files. Now we need to set some compiler flags. So set cmake cxx flags. And this is what we're using to compile our source earlier. So that's just basically dash capital T text 0x8000 dash f free standing dash m no dash red dash zone and dash m64 now we need to set the linker flag so set c make exe linker flags quotation dash t backslash quotation link dot ld backslash quotation quotation bracket now we need to recursively find all of our source files we're going to do it recursively so that if we have further directories inside of our source, then CMake will be able to find them. So, file, glob for global recurse, and we'll name it kernel-c-sources, quotation, asterisk, dot c. So this is just a wildcard so that it will find all of the dot c files within our source directory and put it into kernel c sources variable. And we'll do the same with the CPP, so we'll just copy that, change it from C sources to CPP, and the same with the file extension. Now we do add library. So we're going to be compiling this all into a linkable library. So bracket kernel static, and then dollar sign spiky bracket kernel C sources spiky bracket and the same with our CPP sources and then we need a closing bracket now we need a custom command to link it all at the end so add custom command target kernel post build 
command custom ld dash capital T backslash quotation link dot ld backslash quotation closing bracket. Right, and that's everything for our cmakelists.txt. Now we're going to need to create a new batch file and edit our linker script a little bit. We'll edit the linker script first. So we need to go into link and get rid of all of these object files, except for extended program.o. Now we need to link with lib kernel dot a because this this is the file that our CMake configuration will produce when we run it. All right, so that's it for our linker. Now we need to edit our batch script so that we can actually run it. So we'll open up compile ASM and get rid of everything except for the last, second last, and first and second line. So we just want nasm bootloader ASM, nasm extended program ASN, and copy bootloader bin and kernel bin into bootloader FLP. But now we have our ASM files in the source directory, so we just need to make sure that it can find it. So source slash bootloader and source slash extended program. Now you'll need to use the binaries.asm as well if you're using those included binaries. But at this point in the tutorial, I think we can just get rid of it. We also need to do dash i source. And that just tells nasm that we have to include the source directory when compiling. And the same with extended program.asm, we need to include source. Now we can run our CMake. So CMake, CMake lists.txt dash g. And now we need to tell it to create Unix make files. So quotation Unix make files. And now we need to tell it which compiler to use. So slash capital D C make CXX compiler equals the name of the compiler we've been using. So x86-64-elf-64 dash 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 gcc. And now we need to do the same with c. So d c make c compiler. So get rid of those x's. All right. Now it will produce a make file that we can use. So we just need to do make dash f make file. All right. Now if we run that it should produce our bootloader.flp file. We'll just rename this to something a little bit more appropriate now. Uh, so we'll rename this to just compile. Right. So we have an unrecognized command line option and that is because I spelled freestanding wrong. So this is freestanding here. All right, so as you can see, it's compiling everything, it's built it and it's linked it and we have bootloader.flp ready to go. Now we can just run it and everything should work just as it did before. And as you can see, it's produced our bootloader.flp and we can run it inside of box. However, now looking at our build directory, we've got a lot of junk that CMake has produced. We can do some little batch scripts to help clean that up. So we can go back into compile.batch. So back in compile.bat, we can now delete the files that it produces that we don't need. So we can delete kernel.bin, delete libkernel.a, delete make file, and delete cmake install.cmake. Now we can cd into the cmake files directory and delete everything inside of there. So delete dash f dash q dash s asterisk dot asterisk space arrow space n u l now cd dot dot to get out of that directory so what this delete function did is just basically go through all of the directories and delete all the files now we go out of cmake files and we can remove directory dash q dash s c make files there are two more things we need to delete, and that is bitloader.bin and extendedprogram.o. So delete bootloader.bin and delete extendedprogram.o. Now we can run this, and when it's done, it will clean everything up. See? Perfect. We have a clean project directory, and everything is ready to go. That'll be it for this video. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.